Hello, hello, hello. Um, this is Sena von Kujovi. I am in Japan right now in a park. Um, and I just want to answer a few questions that certain people had. People have. Um, so I'm going to wait a little bit to see who is on this. Hello. Um, so if you have any questions, please just comment. Please say where you're from. I'm just going to wait for a bit. But there are a few questions that... The answer is yes you can you can do uh, you can do a prayer anywhere you don't need to necessarily be at a shrine I am in Japan right now there are not that many voodoo shrines here um, but I have my little altar as long as there's sand you have alcohol you have water you can do prayers and you can do rituals um, I think the goal is to try and just learn some of the basics of how to do prayer by yourself um, and so you don't necessarily need to be um, at a shrine or you don't necessarily need to be at your ancestral home to be able to do rituals. So that's one question that uh, Mr. Livingston had. Um, the answer is yes, depends on what you're doing. Alcohol <coughs> is used usually because it's considered to be hot, right? So people say alcohol awakens the voodoo or spirit and so when they are sleeping or they are not attentive you give them alcohol and you wake them up you also can use alcohol to make them angry so for example <coughs> most people will say they don't give uh, alcohol to legba legba which is the guardian or the deity of the crossroads and the deity that if a priest or far priest or far because usually put outside of their gate and people say you don't give alcohol to legba because legba is very um he can trick you um and he can give bring chaos in your life if you give him too much alcohol or if you give him even alcohol at all some will tell you don't give ever give legba alcohol but uh, at least in our shrine or what i've been told is you can give legba alcohol if you want to make him angry against your enemies or you have a problem and you want to uh, make him angry and you want to make him more alert you give him alcohol um, and that's not only limited to legba that's some other spirits um, you will say you know the alcohol i'm giving you is for my enemies they are the ones who are spitting this alcohol in your face so i want you to face them on my behalf or alcohol is for this challenge i want you to face on my behalf so that is how people will uh, you use alcohol so back to the question of can you should you use water or should you use alcohol it depends on your situation and depends on the spirit but water unlike alcohol which is considered hot um, water is considered to be cool so um, when you want coolness in your life you want peace in your life it's customary to use water and i think that is the same in the yoruba practice as well um, sometimes you use a combination of both alcohol and water so first people will start with water talk about coolness in their life what they want for their family protection prosperity long life children and then they will um, use alcohol temporarily and say well I want uh, hello Ellington nice to meet you I hope you are well yes you use hot drink and water yeah so you some people use both um, so first you use the water then you use the alcohol say I want the hotness um, for alcohol is for the enemies and then after you put the alcohol you will use water again and say the 
alcohol was just for my enemies but for my life and for my family and the people around me I want it to be cool so people will use a combination of water and alcohol um, another mixture that people use normally to do prayers in uh, voodoo is uh, what we call jachi jachi is corn flour and water mixed together right and um, if you mix that that can become even food right because this is what our ancestors used to eat so um, people will use jachi to pray to legba and people will use that in place of water so you can use jachi and alcohol so you first use the jachi then you use the alcohol then you use the what uh, jachi again so cool hot cool right so voodoo uses a lot of hotness and coolness depending on the situation so that's the question about uh, water and alcohol why do we do animal sacrifice when spirits haven't asked for that well it depends on um, who what you mean by spirits have not asked because in different parts uh, of Africa or in Vodou or Ewe, Ewe land um, spirits can talk either through divination either through a medium through spirit possession through dreams and they will tell you if they want animals or they don't want animals um, and sometimes really it's not up to you to decide whether <laughs> A spirit wants animals or a spirit doesn't want animals um, so if a spirit requests that uh, they want an animal to do a certain work so some but somebody comes with a problem and you ask the spirit you know what sh what should I do to solve this problem and then the spirit says I would like you to give me one chicken to give me the energy to do this work because that is what it is is the belief is the life force of the chicken or the animal goes into the spirit right because we understand that energy is not created or destroyed so it's transferred so we are transferring the life force from the animal to the spirits to allow it to work right spirits are there and they can exist without you know blood but by giving them blood you're giving them extra energy it's like a battery right so if a spirit comes to you and tells you I want to do this where give me this um, you will give it and sometimes after the spirit has done the work they will demand that they want um, animals right so they'll be like I did my work you told me to do this work and I've done this work so I want you to uh, uh, I want you to you know pay me back right Elinam Kofi Afenyo Afenyo is saying that uh, but is it really good for us to kill those animals in return of something um, I'll say why not I think that is you know an, one animal or one organism dying for the sake of another that's just how life is right the antelope and the lion you know the lion wants food he needs something the antelope must die right um, we eat food every day um, and other animals have to die some people today think that killing animals is bad but other things are not uh, eating plants are okay but in voodoo plants are as alive as animals and they also feel pain they get angry they feel sad they can talk to you they mostly will outlive animals right some trees are hundreds of years old so you know the the idea is not that you can't kill anything it's being able to be respectful for what when you kill something and being aware of what it is you are doing right and being fully aware of that and you know living being humble about it so I would say that there's not necessarily anything wrong with killing an animal um, for you know a purpose right if you're treating the animal well and you you know what you're doing it's not just you get up and start killing things for the sake it's not like you know you go to you are mass producing chickens or cows or goats in a factory and making them live under deplorable conditions and then slaughtering them where the average person who is consuming meat and buying it at the supermarket doesn't even know where it comes from that's why when they see animals being killed they're feeling so bad and they say this is cruelty but most people are eating food right so I don't think there's anything wrong with that and actually sometimes as I said it's not your it's not the human 
it's not up to you to ask um, or it's not up to you to decide if a spirit should eat or it shouldn't eat and I'll give you an example so la about three years ago we had a ceremony at our shrine in Ghana at the end of the year because that's what we do every year every year all the work that the spirits have done we thank them so people who came to the shrine came to solve their problems first they brought the animal to do the work and then after they pledged that after at the end of the year if the work is complete they'll come back so then you have a lot of animals a lot of uh, um, you see a lot of chickens a lot of goats cows rams and all of that um, and we with our human judgment we also care about the animals and we don't want too much bloodshed so uh, we decided that we are not going to kill all these animals we're going to keep them we're not going to kill them all at once because we don't want to just have a bloodbath and there were two spirits that in the house are known as competing spirits because they do the same work they don't like they, not that they don't like each other but they're competing against each other to show who is stronger and what we did was one of them people had brought about four or five rams and the other people brought about two or three goats and what we said was we are going to kill one goat for this spirit and use the same blood to give it to that spirit so that we avoid killing animals right we don't want to kill too much and that's what we use with our human judgment and we humanly agreed all the priests in the house agreed we're like okay we're not gonna to kill too much and what happened was we killed this thing and I kid you not the next day three of the rams from that spirit died all of a sudden in the morning and they all died at the base of that shrine so these goats were just roaming around all over the shrine but that spirit just basically those three rams that were there that were for that spirit they all died that same morning at the same place in front of the shrine and we were surprised and you know I put this up on snapchat and I was like wow this is crazy so we went to do a reading we went to do a reading is like what happened right is this was this the spirit that actually killed it or was that some other negativity or was it just a sickness that killed these animals and when we went there the spirits basically said this animal is my animal it's not your animal because we did the work you asked us to do work and you said if we do the work you're going to give us this animal so we demand that we get it plus and this was the interesting part they said that um, you know at the end of the year when you do these rituals for spirits they are spirits the same way we humans we also invite a lot of people to come to um, the shrine to celebrate with us they also invite other spirits to celebrate and they need food and they need energy to be able to serve those spirits so when you deny them their animals at the end of the year you're also denying them the possibility of having this sort of party a spiritual party and so they told us it's not up to us to decide for them if they should eat or if they shouldn't eat because if they've done the work they deserve it so you know you may, we may have our human judgment of you know feeling bad or you know I, I feel bad to seeing animals being killed yes you may have that but the spiritual world also exists in its own parallel to this universe and they have their own laws and they have their own reasons as well so sometimes we shouldn't just use our human judgment and say you know I feel bad and so I don't want to do it of course you should try and limit bloodshed you know don't just kill senselessly but you need to be very aware that spirits are their own entities it's not we humans that are giving them laws they've existed before us and they will continue to be there so we need to know how to move with them or else you will be in trouble all right so this is not it's a very practical faith or a very practical tradition that we are part of that spirits are very alive so you need to be able to know how to move with them you can't just use your human judgment and read your books and your own moral code and say this is right this is wrong and because of that I'll deny them they, they can also decide to leave you and not to work with you right that also happens where you know you can have a spirit if you don't treat it well it's, it's gonna leave and you can call it and it's not going to do the same work again so that is that um, so I've seen that there are a few people here um, if you have any questions please uh, say where you're from um, and then ask your question uh, in the meantime I'll go and continue answering the questions that we had earlier 
I'm going to be away in about uh, 15 minutes or even less so please be quick um, thank you I think the best thing is to find a teacher somebody who will teach you um, but also find somebody or find people that you're compatible with right some people are good uh, priests and they're good teachers but they may not necessarily be compatible with you right and also some spirits are very powerful but not all spirits may be compatible with you right I think a lot of uh, one mistake that people make is they they try to follow spirits because of the, the popularity of the spirit um, they will say that you know it's you know this spirit I've heard the name I've read so much about it I think I'm a child of this spirit and I want to follow yes that may be true that may not be true you know there are thousands of spirits that are there you know some spirits that uh, nobody knows only you or some only one old man knows but that is working the goal is to I would say to try and find a spirit that's working for you and is responsive to you rather than you know being part of you know just um, just uh, affiliation to a spirit because it's a big name right you want to find one a teacher that's compatible and two a spirit that is compatible and so you'll see that you know a lot you can have hundreds of spirits but a spiritualist will always have that one or two spirits that he considers his master spirits or the spirits that he responds to the most because they respond to him they are very fast right and these things it's, it's a relationship you need to build it over time you need to um, give them tasks first doubt them then make them uh, give you prove you prove to you that they are alive and then repeat that a couple of times and then you'll know if the spirit is there and if it's responsive and those spirits will be the ones that will be the first in line to uh, respond to you and when you uh, start getting other spirits they would be overseeing those spirits and they will you know basically sometimes act as the middleman right so you want to find those kind of spirits in your life so you know for example if you came to our shrine you know we can teach you right but we also don't have all the spirits in the world maybe the spirits in our shrine is not necessarily compatible with you and that is something that you need to know and evaluate yourself and if not you you have to go somewhere else it doesn't mean that you won't learn from us you learn from us you can maintain your ties with us but you need to know that you know spirituality is an individual affair it's your own road uh, to try to connect with the divine and to connect with your inner self and so you need to find what is good for you and that ties into you know which lineage you may follow which faith you may follow maybe voodoo is not for you you know maybe it's you know the Yoruba side or maybe something else you know everybody has their own destiny and what is good for them and I think you want to strive to try and find what is good for you right both in um, what, what is good for you basically yes uh, Mr. Apenyo, I said you are you are from Accra. Yes, I'm from Accra too. Originally, I'm from Hohwe. Um, my father is from Hohwe in the Volta region, and my mother is from Takasaki in Japan. And I'm currently living in uh, Japan right now. Um, and yes, uh, you said so. You mean spirits really eat? Yes, spirits do eat. Um, if they do work, they do eat. You know, a spirit. You know they are also forgotten spirits where at one point in their time they were popular and now they are not popular and so nobody is giving them food you know those spirits sometimes are weak and so they can't do the work that they need to do so you know th these are spiritual beings that need sustenance and that's why we give them water we give them food sometimes we give them uh, animals uh, as energy they kind of act as a battery for them um, and and I can I can I from my personal experience I can assure you that after you do a sacrifice the way the spirits work is not the same all right so you can see even in the year right so we do two big ceremonies in the year in June at the end of June and the end of December right and when we do these rituals you know sometimes 
December 31st from 1st, 2nd, 3rd, you'll see the spirits very active, very, very quick to give information because they just eat. And then you see sometime around May and things, you know, they slow down a bit. Doesn't mean they're not working. They're just a little slowed down, slower to respond and whatnot. And then you give them food again and they do it. If you're in a ritual and you start giving them, and if you can feel spirits shaking, and when I mean feel spirit is you have the ability to channel spirits to physically move you, right? There are specific rituals you can do to do that. When you do give them blood, you will feel them. They can throw you down on the floor. I've seen this happen. I've seen some of my cousins being thrown on the floor completely and they can't control it, right? This usually happens when you're doing uh, 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 after you've done blood sacrifice. So it does, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's something that's very skipped. And this is not something specific to just African traditions, right? This has existed in, you know, many Abrahamic faiths, you know, even in Idul, Idul Fitul for the Muslims, you know, in Ghana, during after Ramadan, you will say that... Um, people will kill a ram right in Yom Kippur in the Jewish traditions they also do you know chicken sacrifice um, if you remember in the Bible people say Cain and Abel you know they said uh, Cain brought vegetables whereas Abel brought um, a ram right and that's why his sacrifice was accepted which shows you that maybe even in the you know the God in Jerusalem or in that side of the world, they were also eating blood, which is why also you know, God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son. And when he did so, people said that he was faithful to God, right? And at that point, Adam didn't, uh, Abraham didn't necessarily kill his son Isaac, but it means to say that that was something that has been happening before. That's why these things are happening. Or that's just my view, at least. So animal sacrifice is not limited to voodoo. But it's just very is a, is a very practical part um, and uh, important part of voodoo practice, right? And that's very hard to do in Japan. It's not easy to do in Japan. So there are a few things that you can do to kind of um, circumvent that problem. But from time to time, it's important to always sustain your spirits, right? Um, Okay, that's nice to know, Mr. Afenio. Thank you for being very uh, vocal. Hello, Charles. I hope you are watching. Uh, I know. Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you are doing well. And Mr. Bright, uh, the wonderful artist, thank you. Uh, Bogna, thank you for watching. Mr. Omikunle Fatomi, nice to meet you. Thank you for watching. And Mr. Yansley. I hope you are well in Mauritius. Thank you for watching. Um, so I'm hoping to do these kind of sessions every Sunday where we'll take questions from that people have during the week um, and we'll just answer them. Um, either myself or either my father or my brothers in the shrine will do that. Um, so I'll be wrapping up now if you don't have any further questions. Um, but if you have any questions, I'll wait for a minute to see if you have questions and and be answering them you can have you can ask ask questions about voodoo or you can ask questions about my life you can ask questions about my family i'm open This is my first Facebook live on revolution um, so I'm still figuring out what I need to do or how I can be of help to you um, but if you have any questions please write them now uh, if not I will be going in about 40 seconds I guess I can talk a little bit about the projects that we are hoping to do. Will I do a video? Of, okay, thank you, Mr. Omikunle Fatomi. I don't know how if I pronounce it well. I will do a video of the application of the Gumaga. Um, yes, uh, my question is what 
kind of application are you talking about? Uh, we've, we've released a few videos about how, okay, I'll just give context. The Gumaga is the divining chain used among Fa or Ifa practitioners. Um, in other, some other people call it Fa Plein, uh, and I think um, in Yoruba land too, they use an, a similar word Opele or something like that. I don't speak Yoruba, so I'm not too good at that. But um, basically, it's a divining chain that you throw on the mat to um, find the Ifa sign used to do divination, and there are a total of 256 signs. Um, we can make a video, we've made some videos already, so we've made a video called Peaceful Opposites. If you go to our video section, you can find it. It's a um, video about how people, uh, basically how Santeria uh, is practiced in Cuba and how similar it is, it is to uh, what we do in Vodou. Yes, so it is, it is similar to how you use the Opele, yes, that's true. Um, and uh, yeah, and so in that video we talk about it, but we don't go into the particulars of that. But also, I think about two weeks ago we released a video where instead of using the gumaga, we are using uh, cowrie shells, so cowrie shell divination by using the fast system. So we are using eight shells so that we can see one of the 256 signs. So you know, I, I explained that very vividly and, and tell you in detail. You know, what is it? Is when is one? When is two? Um, but if, if there's anything that in particular that you would like to know about the application of the Gumaga, um, I can answer them here. If you have any questions, I can answer that now. Or if you would like us to make a video, um, I think it would be helpful for us to just know what exactly about the Gumaga do you want to know. Do you want to know the signs? Uh, do you want to know the different types of Gumaga that exist? Do you want a comparative a com uh, a comparison between the Gumaga in Ewe Fa versus Yoruba land versus Santeria or what exactly about the Gumaga would you like to know because um... oh so the Voji yes I think that's something that we would like to make uh, is the what is the Voji so what is the Voji so in Fa when you do a divination so you use a chain which is the gumaga which will show you one of the 256 signs and each sign tells a story or many stories right and the voji is usually put in the sack of a boko and they're just many many items right so sometimes you can have money like coins you can have bones that represent death you can have some seas that are representing witchcraft or envy so basically these items in the sack are used by the diviner to pinpoint what exactly the problem is because in each sign you know people will say that there are you know a lot of stories per sign in each of the 256 so that's a lot of information and so to be able to now narrow down from all of these possibilities in one story to one that is most pertinent or applicable to the individual they will use the Voji to help them, right? So where is this problem coming from? Um, and yes, people who do that very well, uh, they, they are the best diviners because they're able to pinpoint exactly what the problem is, right? Um, so yes, that is a good idea. Thank you for uh, suggesting how uh, about using Voji. Um, if you've seen a far boko before and they're on the mat you will normally see them um, playing with the voji before they do the divination so they'll be sitting on the mat and there'll be a lot of items in front of them and they will be basically moving them and be reciting all the uh, incantations of fa and the spirits that they work with and then they'll put and when they throw the sign they'll put three on the uh, they'll put a couple on the left a couple on the right and then they'll throw the gumaga and to gumaga will tell you pick right side or pick the left side so you throw two signs how you'll know whether it's a yes or a no is in the 256 signs they are ranked from the first to the last and it is believed that if the first comes before the last uh, it is a no and if it is the last bond that comes before the first if the last bond comes before the first is no and if the first bond comes before the last one is yes 
So for example, if you have a Meiji, a Meiji means one of the main 16 signs, which are the oldest signs. If a Meiji comes first, and then a younger one comes later, it's yes. But if a smaller one comes first, and then a Meiji comes later, it's no. So depending on that, you know if you should pick the right side or the left side, and then you just keep doing that until you get to one Voji, and that Voji should be telling you the story of what exactly is the problem of the person and how do you solve it, right? So it depends on if it is a, it is in Engevo or Enyovo. So what is Engevo? There are different ways that people have dis defined it, but um, the question is, how do you determine which Vodi goes to the right and which goes to the left? People, well, it doesn't really matter whether it goes to the left because Fa will pick it. But when you do a, a Fa reading, usually they have three signs, right? There's the main sign that comes that talks about what is the problem. And then there's two signs that are kind of sub secondary. They are both on the left and the right. Um, and when they do the reading, the first sign that comes, they'll talk about it. Then the Bokol is going to ask Fa, is this thing Enyovu? Alo, Enyovu? Enyovo, they'll say, some people define it as this thing is now coming. So whatever the sign is talking about is something in the future, right? And then Enyovo is something that has already happened in the past or is happening right now. So they are defining it in terms of time. So there are certain Voji that you pick if it is Enyovo and there are certain Voji that you pick when it's Enyovo. So this is something that you have to learn, right? So... When it is, if say it is Enyovo, they say this thing is in the future, then you pick the certain Voji. Then you touch each Voji that you pick. You pick it up, you touch it on the money of the client who is coming to do the reading, and you talk about it. And then you first you put it left, right. Then you put it down on the right. Then you go again, you touch it on the money, you put it left, right. So you keep on putting individually all the Vojis. And then at the end of the day, you have some on the left, some on the right, right? And this can be determined randomly. You just know that whether it's left or right, it doesn't matter. You just pick it, say, these are the Voji that I'm going to pick for any of you. So then you're going to put it on the left. Then you pick it one by one. You put this on the right, pick this one, blah. So then you have, by the time you're about to start to now cast the Gumaga, you're going to have Vojis on your left, you have Vojis on your right. Then you ask, Fa, do I take the left side or do I take the right side? Then you throw the chain. Then let's say a Meiji comes. If a Meiji with a major sign comes, you're probably going to pick the left, right? And then you pick. And then again, you move some. You just, sometimes they'll just pick. So now you have, let's say, seven or eight Vojis on your right because you just removed the left. Now you take five, you put it on the left. Then you ask the same question. Afa, do you do left or right? And then you keep doing that until you get to one. And that's when you know that that's the one that you pick. Um, if there are other priests that are around here who would like to explain this, um, please do as well. Um, I'm still a young priest, you know, there's still a lot to learn. It's something that can't be learned in a short amount of time, it takes a lifetime to master. So if you have any comments that you can share on the application of Voji, that would be helpful. But this is how this is done in Ewe Fa. Um, I know when my in, I've never been to Nigeria, so I can't tell you about what they do in Nigeria. But I know that in Cuba, they do some sort of voji, but it's not the whole set. At least what I experienced, it wasn't the whole set. It was the voji was remaining in the sack, but they were using two, where they asked people to put things in their hand, right? One of the voji in their hand, and then they determine whether it is left or right. Or when you have a question, yes or no, they'll tell you, you know. You know, they'll give you the two voji and you, you mix it in your hand, you hold it, you hide it from the boko and the boko would throw the chain and tell you open your hand on your left or open your hand on the right. And depending on that, they'll tell you if it is a yes or if it's a no. So that's how um, they use voji. So it's not necessarily you put it left or right. They are randomly allocated, left and right. You just pick them one by one. But whether it is Engevo or Enyovo, the what Voji you pick are, 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 are specified. Thank you very much for that question. I think that's a very insightful question. Um, so if there are no more questions, I would like to go and I'll wait 30 seconds to see if there are any more questions about that.
it's a very cloudy day so it's not sunny but it's nice it's cool it's not hot Japan is going to get very very hot from now on so I'm not looking forward to that but what can we do So people will use the voji to determine what so let's say after you've done the reading and then you want to know you know okay what ritual you need to do which vosa you need to do which is the sacrifice on the shrine you need to know for example which animals you need to do uh, you need to sacrifice if there is an animal sacrifice and not all vosa includes sacrifice but if that's the case some people will use the voji to determine what animal to kill or what animal to use right they'll ask is it a four-legged animal and they'll bring a voji that has four legs they'll say is it a two-legged animal they'll bring that is it an animal that has a beak and all, all those kind of questions that they'll ask to determine which animal will be used to do the sacrifice um, but I can see that there are no more questions, um, so I will be ending. Thank you very much for the people that were uh, present. Um, see you next week. Bye-bye. Please write your questions that you have um, in the comments uh, so that I can answer it the next time we do it or that my colleagues in the shrine can do so. Thank you. Bye-bye.